Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas and I'm standing next to my electrical meter and I have here a really interesting device called a grid tight inverter. Now this inverter is not super powerful, it's 200 watts and it's basically the same thing as any pure sine inverter with one major, actually a few major differences. This inverter is designed to plug directly into any outlet in your house. Now if you look, it's just got a regular male prong and what this inverter does is it takes direct current from solar panels or wind turbines and it converts it into alternating current. Where this differs from a regular inverter is that it has electronics inside that can read the frequency of the electricity provided to you by the power company to match that frequency. It also increases the voltage just above whatever your house has. So anything that comes in through the direct current is converted into alternating current and then is pumped into the grid in your house. Now if you have enough of these or if you have one that's strong enough, it will actually produce more electricity than what your house uses and it'll pump it back into the grid that runs throughout your neighborhood. This should make your meter turn backwards. Now this inverter is not going to do that unless we shut everything off inside of our house because it's only 200 watts. So if we're pulling anything above 200 watts, all that this is going to do is supplement our house. This is a great way of getting around uh, doing all the changeovers in your house, having an electrician come in and reinstall everything. I've actually tested this and it works really well. You just plug this into your solar panels or your wind turbine and plug this into your outlet and you can actually, I have a way of showing you how this is actually going to feed our grid inside of our house. Now these do not operate on 12 volts, so that's important to know. These operate between, this particular one operates between 14 volts and 28 volts. So if you plug it into just 12 volt, nothing's gonna happen. So what I'm gonna do is take you inside. I have two batteries that I have charged with the solar panel, and we're gonna be using that for the test. We're not gonna be hooking this directly to our solar panels because it's a cloudy day out. They're not really producing much, and I'm gonna show you how this works. And hopefully at the end of this video, we're gonna see if we can get this meter to tick backwards. What I have here is two 12 volt batteries hooked up in series. Remember I said it doesn't work off of 12 volts, so you have to step it up to 24 volt. So I'm gonna take our tester and you can see that we're up to 24 volts. So the first thing you do is you take your AC outlet. Now this normally would be a bad thing if you had AC current coming out of here, but this can tell if there's anything hooked to it or not, so you don't get shocked. Now this plugs into the wall, just like that, regular outlet and then these hook to your battery terminals. Now you want to use really, really thick wiring. When I tested this, I used a thin wire like this and uh, it actually burned it right in half. These actually pull a pretty good amount of amps, so that's not a good thing to do. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hook this up. We've got it plugged into the wall. And we're just going to hook this up. You can see that there's a series of lights. If you have one green light, that means that it's not working because your voltage is too low. If you have the fault light come on, that's another warning sign. The faster these lights go, the more that this is pumping into the grid. So right now our house is pulling well, well above 200 watts. So what's happening is this is actually supplementing the electricity with inside of our house. So it's making our meter run uh, slower. Now, how do I know that this is working? There's a couple ways, a couple tests that I came up with. The first one is to see how many amps that this is pulling. So I'm going to zoom in on the cord. All right, we're zoomed in, and I'm going to uh, switch this over to read the amps that this wire is pulling. And you can see that right now this is pulling... 8.6 amps so this is actually pulling a load right now so either this is just going nowhere or this is actually doing something so we're plugged into the wall here and this is a kilowatt meter that we've used in previous videos this measures volts the Hertz in your line watts and amps so what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this in right now and see what it's doing so I unplugged this now I'm gonna plug this in and I'm going to switch it over to volts. 
you can see that right now we're uh, at 120 volts. Now I'm going to check the amps. You can see that this is 1.65, 1.7. You can see the amps going through this right now. So there, that means that either there's a current running in both directions, which would blow the inverter up, or this is going the other direction because these don't really care which way the electrical current runs. So what I'm going to do now is switch it over to watts. So right now this is at 228 watts, 229 watts, actually 230. You see our lights, it's a little out of focus, but you can see that this is working perfectly. And we're pumping 230 watts back into our house's grid. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the direct current source off of the inverter and you can watch this number drop through it. It'll go to, it should go to zero. So you can see it goes right down to zero. Everything stops. We're going to hook it back up. The inverter, it takes a little time to do its thing. Then it gradually picks up and gradually picks up. Now keep in mind, these are really well charged batteries. Your solar panel, if it's a 45 watt Harbor Freight system, is not going to give you the same thing as this because these are fully charged. So this drains these pretty quickly actually. And another thing to keep in mind is that you don't want to set your solar panels in series because you can actually damage them with this. So right now what's happening is the direct current from these batteries is going into the inverter. It's being converted into 120 volt alternating current. It's coming out and it's going into our grid and it's supplementing our house right now. So the next thing that we're going to do, I am going to shut everything off at the main in our circuit box to where we pull nothing. But I'm going to do it right after we watch our meter tick up one number. That way it would just be a little bit above that. In theory, we should be able to hook this up and get the meter to go backwards. One thing to note about these uh, inverters is that you can hook as many as you want to the same circuit. So you could take 10 200 watt inverters and pump 2,000 watts into your house, but you of course would need a solar panel or a wind turbine capable of handling that. This is our circuit panel inside of our house. Now, if you don't know anything about electricity, I don't encourage you to play around with this stuff, but what I'm gonna be doing is, I'm gonna be looking at the meter, and once the number clicks up, meaning that we used one kilowatt, and it's just a little bit above that, I'm gonna shut the main off here. I'm gonna hook everything up, and I'm only gonna turn that one circuit on. I'm going to click everything off so only the circuit that has that inverter to it will be there. So it should be pumping electricity back into the grid and we're going to see if the meter goes backwards. That circuit doesn't have anything on it so it's not going to be used for anything but to go back into the grid. So right now our meter is at 42716. So when it goes to 42717, we're going to shut everything off because that'll be just above the kilowatt uh, mark. And we're going to plug that in and see how long it takes for it to go backwards or if this meter is even capable of doing that. Okay, we just had an uptick. I'm going to shut the main off. All right, so now I'm gonna go inside in the dark and I'm gonna plug that inverter in. All right, so it's plugged in. See if we notice anything different with the meter. What should be happening right now is the inverter should be back feeding power through this meter up into the neighborhood grid. While we're waiting for this, I'm going to have Denise unplug the inverter and see if there's any changes that take place. Okay, so right now she unplugged it and you notice that that arrow disappeared on there. The one that said that power was going backwards into the system. She's plugging it back in and the backwards arrow. So this is feeding electricity back into the grid. You can actually see that it's saying that there is energy flowing that way. So it's saying that it's going backwards into the grid. How long has it been? 
We've been going for about 40 minutes now, and um, that means that we have a greedy meter. It's not gonna let it tick backwards. But what you do notice is this arrow here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gradually turn the, everything on and go let her know to shut that off in the house. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and you're gonna watch everything change directions. We proved that this grid tight inverter actually does work and we've also proved that we probably have a greedy meter that won't allow it to go backwards. We did see the arrow showing that they were taking power that we were producing and putting it back into the neighborhood grid, but they weren't going to let it go backwards. So we let it run for about 40 minutes at 236 watts on average. So it should have done the back tick, but it didn't. That doesn't really matter though for your house because you're going to be pulling a lot more than what this inverter does. So what this is going to do is supplement the grid inside of your house. Now, anytime you hook an electrical device that's new up to your house, it's a good idea to be around for a couple days while it's on just to make sure you did everything okay. If you're not really experienced with electricity, get someone who is to help you with this. This is basically a plug and play model. It's not going to get much simpler than this but you just wanna make sure that your panels are hooked correctly. You can hook your panels to batteries to this. You just wanna make sure that you're between the voltage range of 14 volts and 28 volts because this will just turn on. If you see one green light or the fault light, it means it's not working. If you see the green lights clicking along, it is working. So these are interesting little devices. They're pretty expensive right now. This 200 watt one was about 350 bucks. They should come down in price just like inverters did. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.